Regardless if you're trading stocks or options, it's important to know the expected move in the stock. The good news is that it's pretty easy to calculate. It's also surprisingly reliable. So stick around after the intro. We'll show you two methods that you can use to estimate the expected move in a stock. All right, so there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to know what the expected move in a stock is, other than the obvious of you know wanting to know what your risk reward ratio is. You know, maybe you're holding a stock over earnings, maybe you're trying to set up an option trade and trying to sell some short calls, but whatever it is, it's it's really helpful to know what the expected move is over the next you know week or two weeks or month or whatever your time frame is. So let's look at an example. Um, here we got Applied Materials ticker AMAT. So this stock actually is going to report earnings tomorrow after the close. And you can see it's it's pretty much in this consolidation pattern. It, it's actually right at resistance right now. And but let's say you've been in the stock for a while. You know, maybe you got in back here after, you know, after this consolidation and break out of the trend line. You know, maybe you, you got in here somewhere around, you know, $102 and you've been holding the stock. So you got a pretty decent cushion now. So at this point, you know, you got to decide, are you going to sell the position and just book the profit or Maybe, you know, maybe take a partial profit, maybe sell a third of your position or maybe half of your position and hold the rest over earnings. But if you're going to do that, you want to at least have an idea of, you know, what, what is your expected risk if, if the earnings report is, you know, doesn't go your way? So there's two methods that you can use to try and estimate the expected move. And both of those calculations involve looking at the options. So to do that, we go over to the trade tab and you can see all the different expiration dates that we have. What you want to do is you want to pick the expiration date that's closest to your earnings date. So for an earnings uh, of May 18th, we would choose the May 19th expiration. And once you open that tab, the next thing you want to do is you want to pick your strike price as close as possible to the current stock price. So the current stock is at 125.70. So that means we scroll down to $126. And then what you do is you calculate what it would cost you to buy a straddle at that strike price. For both the call and the put, you want to find the midpoint. So the midpoint between 233 and 245 is $2.39. And then you do the same thing on the put side. You find the midpoint between 258 and 272. That gives you $2.65. Then you add those two numbers together and it gives you a total of $5.04. So $5.04 is your calculated expected move after the earnings report. Now, the other way to do this, the other way is actually a lot simpler. Um, most platforms are probably very similar. In Thinkorswim, it actually just gives you the calculation. So for whatever expiration date that you have open, you look over to the right side and it gives you, it tells you that it's based on implied volatility and it gives you an, an estimated move of $5.21. Now, the reason that these two numbers are different, and, and I mean, they are pretty similar, and, and sometimes you'll find that they might be almost exactly the same, and sometimes you'll have you know a, a wider discrepancy between them. The reason that can happen is the calculation that we did is very basic. It's basically just looking at one strike price and calculating a straddle at that strike. The implied volatility calculation actually looks at various strike prices, both above and below the current stock price, and it looks at the option volatility and options activity, and it uses that to try and estimate what the actual move in the stock is going to be. So now once we have our number, let's go back to the chart. And what I like to do is I like to draw some trend lines just to give me uh, you know, a visual of where the stock could go after earnings. So to do that, if we take the stock price of 125.70, and if we add $5.04, that gives us an upper limit of $130.74. So 130.74 puts us pretty much right there. So that's our upper trend line. Then if we do the same thing for the lower trend line, Again, taking the stock price of 125.70, this time subtracting $5.04, that gives us $120.66. So that puts us right about there. So now, now at least you have a visual of kind of what your risk is, what your possible reward is after the earnings report. Now again, remember, this is just a calculation. This is no different than any other indicator that you're using. 
I've seen times where a company will report and either the earnings were just so bad or, or they blew the numbers out of the water. And the, the actual move you get is, you know, it could be double what we just calculated. You know, there's, there's no guarantees. Like I said, this is just like any other indicator. It's one more piece of information. I, I will say it is quite reliable, but you know, just like anything else, it's not going to work 100% of the time. So it's just information to help you make a decision, but it's never going to be accurate 100% of the time. Again, in this example, the reason to try to predict the estimated move was because we're holding a position over earnings. But there's a lot of other reasons why we might want to do it. So let's look at, let's look at ticker SMH. So this is the, um, the semiconductor ETF. So there's no earnings to worry about in this, uh, in this stock. But let's say you were looking at this stock over the last couple of days and you wanted to start a position. I mean, this day here would have been a really nice day to start a position. Uh, you see it's been consolidating for a while. And a couple of days ago, it got back above the moving averages. You know, really nice move there. Pretty decent volume. You know, volume was pretty much right at average. Um, that would have been a nice day to, to get in a position. But even today, you know, today was another breakout, making a new high again. So let's say you wanted to get this, get into this stock, but to lower your risk, you want to sell covered calls against it to lower your cost basis. The, the first question will be, well, at, at what strike price and, and what duration do you want to sell that at? One method that you can use is to calculate the expected move, and that'll give you a good target to use as a strike price. So again, let's go back to the trade tab. And once again, you can see all the different dates that we have for options expiry. Now, let's say in this case, you want to go out a little more, you know, let's say you want to go out like a month in time so you can actually collect a little more premium. So if we look at the, the monthly uh, June expiration, so it's June 16th, again, when you look over to the right, it gives you that calculated value. This time it's telling you that they're predicting a move of $8.26 by June 16th. So now just as a comparison, let's open up this tab and we'll do our calculation based on the straddle. So in this case, the stock price is at 129.50. So again, we wanna pick our strike price as close as possible to 129.50. So if we scroll down, we'll find $130. And then again, you do the exact same method. You find the midpoint between 365 and 375. So obviously that's $3 and 70 cents. And you take the midpoint between 365 and 380. So that puts us at about 372. You add those two up and you get a total of $7.42. So again, here, here you can see the, the difference is a little bit bigger than in the last example from 742 to 826. So we're getting a little more discrepancy on this one. And there could be all kinds of things that cause that. Again, you know, like, like I said, it, th this is looking only at one strike price, whereas this calculation is looking at several strike prices. So there could have been some unusual options activity. Maybe someone bought a large number of options at a different strike price, and you know that could be affecting the volatility. So there's all kinds of stuff that go into the calculation. So once you start using this method, for the stocks that you trade, you'll start to see a pattern on which calculation is more accurate. You know, every stock trades a little differently. And some, for some stocks, it might be more accurate to look at the straddle calculation. In other stocks, it might be more accurate, you know, to look at the implied volatility calculation. The only way to really know that is to is to keep doing it. You know, take good notes, write it in your journal, and you know, you'll you'll see a pattern develop pretty quickly. All right. So now that we have our expected move, let's go back to the chart again. And again, in this case, so we take our stock price of 129.50 and let's add 742 to it. And that gives us an upper range of 136.92. So we can draw our line here, right about there. So now if you were gonna sell covered calls against the stock and you wanted to go you know, a month out in time, you, know, you, could, you could sell covered calls somewhere right around, you know, say 136, $137, whatever, whatever strike prices are happen to be available. And that'll give you a good probability of either either the option expiring worthless and you keeping the premium. And if you do get called away, the stock probably won't be a lot higher than your strike price on the short call. Now on the flip side, it's always important to know what your risk is. So in this case, I would still draw a trend line to show what, you know, what the worst case scenario is if the stock were to pull back by that amount. So if we take the stock price again of 129.50 and this time we subtract $7.42, that gives us 122.08. So 122.08 puts us right about here. And look how nicely this worked out. You know, this is why I love charts. When when you use different methods, like chart analysis, you know, moving averages, uh, here we got the, the 1.5 ATR plotted. And and then you do some, some calculation, like an expected move calculation. And look how nicely it all lines up. I mean, the expected move just happens to be right where support was for the last couple of weeks. 
So what this is telling you is, is that if this stock were to pull back now, you know, obviously the moving averages would be the first level of support. But really, if it came all the way back down to 122, the stock's not really doing anything wrong. It's just retesting that support level. And then you'd have to you know, watch and see if you get a bounce from there or a break of that support. So as long as you're using this expected move calculation, just like you would any other indicator, you know, like, like I said, it's, it's just one extra piece of information. It's, there's nothing magical. There's nothing special about this calculation. Um, all, all it's doing is looking at the option activity and then trying to predict what the maximum move in that stock could be by a given period of time. And, you know, as long as you're using it the way it's intended as, you know, an extra piece of information to help make your decision. And if you're using that in conjunction with, you know, proper chart analysis, looking at the volume, um, you know, all, all those other things that, that you normally do to begin with, this is just one extra piece of information that should help you in your trading. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, and hopefully this, you know, this helps your trading out. This is something that you can incorporate into your trading strategy. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments on this, please post those down in the comment section. And, and I'll just ask if you're enjoying the content of our videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really does help us out a lot. And we'll see you next time.